Okay, back again. So now we're going to find out why does this happen in direct injection? Well, it goes back, Mike, like we talked about in the previous videos, that because in a direct injection engine, the fuel is being introduced directly into the combustion chamber rather than upstream, the amount of time that the fuel has to vaporize is cut in just about half. Okay. And it's important to note that, you know, an injector, its job is to atomize the fuel. But you don't burn atomized fuel because all atomized is is a small droplet. Mm. It's still a liquid. What we burn is a gas. So the fuel has to vaporize before it can be burned. And what happens in a direct injection engine is essentially two things. That fuel has less time for it to vaporize. So that unvaporized fuel, that droplets, two things happen. One, it will mix with the oil on the cylinder wall. Okay. And that can cause some problems and we'll address that later. The other issue, which we just talked about in the previous video, is that unvaporized droplet under that high combustion pressure and temperature crystallizes. That's what forms the soot that causes the timing chain wear. So that's the unique thing about direct injection. Because the, the injector's time being smaller, now you have soot and now you have fuel dilution, and the fuel dilution is what leads to the low speed pre-ignition. So it's a combination of that fuel staying in the droplet form, but then don't we also need something to happen from the motor oil? Yes, so the different oils, like you're showing here, have a different ability to hold the fuel and oil together. Mm. So if the fuel and oil emulsify, now you're kind of changing things up chemically, you know, and you got a pretty good science project over there. Yeah, so what I did here, this is the same motor oil, and I just took three different additives. I used uh, acetone in here, I used isopropyl alcohol here, and I used some simple green HD here. And what I was trying to show, because I saw a slide in, in Lake's presentation earlier, uh, I was trying to show how different it can be and how different uh, mixtures of, of compounds can have a different type of reaction and, and, and different level of emulsification. So here we've got acetone and, uh, and motor oil, and if we shake that up, we pretty much have acetone and motor oil. Um, and they don't really do anything. We don't see much happening there. They kind of mix very well. In this case here, with the isopropyl alcohol, which also has some water in it and oil, we'll see what happens. And we get almost like a, a milkshake consistency. Uh, this is what happens when um, you raise that boost level too high and, and blew that head gasket, and that's what your motor oil looks like. Um, never a good thing. By never the way. a good thing. And then this one here. Um, let's show you what a real emulsification will look like. And you see, it's a very Solid. complete mix. Yeah, of, of that. And this type of mixture, if the chemical composition of that oil is that right composition and it mixes with the fuel, what happens with this? So that hard emulsion like that, now that fuel and oil are locked together. Hmm. And the downside is oil has a lower octane value than fuel. So maybe you might be running you know, 91 octane pump gas or something even higher octane than that. But oil, motor oil, has a very low octane value. Hmm. So the more tightly emulsified the oil and fuel are, the lower the octane value of that uh, combination. This is a great example. When the fuel and oil remain separate, guess what happens? There is no mixture. The fuel just evaporates away mm. the next cycle, and it's fine, and there's no knock, and there's no detonation because of that lower mm. octane value. Here, you're getting some emulsification, but if you could zoom in really close, you can see there's still droplets. There's, mm. there's some phase separation there, which is allowing that fuel to vaporize off still without causing a lot of damage to you in terms of lowering that octane value. That last example is a perfect example of that emulsion, and because of that emulsion, that oil-fuel mixture, low octane value, detonation is going to occur. Now, of course, in a motor oil in your engine, you're not going to have acetone, you're not going to have isopropyl alcohol, and you're not going to have simple grain HD mixing with it. But what we see here 
actually, I was inspired by the slides that you showed and it was a, a product of the amount of calcium in it? So your simple green is a perfect example because most people would look at simple green and call it a detergent. Hmm. Well, like you were mentioning about calcium, so every motor oil to keep the pistons and things clean has a detergent additive in it. Not the same chemical compound as that, but the same concept as detergents are there to keep the parts clean. The most common detergents in motor oil are calcium and sodium and sometimes magnesium. The problem with low speed pre-ignition in motor oil is that calcium detergents are the most prevalent. They also cause the hardest form of emulsion. Mm -hmm. So a high level of calcium leads to high levels of emulsion, which leads to high level of detonation. It's a bad thing. So as an industry, this is the biggest topic. We are reformulating motor oils right now reducing the levels of calcium, eliminating sodium to try to get rid of those bad actors that can cause low speed pre-ignition. So already the American Petroleum Institute, the API, they've come up with a new spec for this before our current spec was, was SN and now we have SN plus? Exactly, SN plus was designed to try to address this issue where we're beginning to lower the levels of calcium detergent, eliminate sodium, and in some cases try to bring along some other additives to try to help mitigate the damage that's caused by high levels of calcium in the oil. Because you can't just eliminate the calcium because you still have to have detergent to keep the piston clean because you don't want pistons looking like this. You want to keep the piston clean, you want the ring land clean, so you need detergency in the oil. We're just having to find more alternative ways to do it preventing that kind of issue. So let's take a look at some of the products on the market. Um, and we look at the back of them and this is where we have a little API seal. And uh, this right here is a diesel oil. So yes. What do we see there? So a diesel oil, while a lot of turbo guys have loved that in the past, it is the kiss of death for a direct injection engine because typically diesel oils have the highest level of detergent. So they're going to tend to cause issues like this. So you really don't want a diesel formulation for a direct injection engine. Now they may say, hey, but you said something about soot and diesels make soot. Isn't it diesel? It's great for the soot part, terrible for the detonation part. So stay away from the diesel oils for the application. The other issue is, so an oil like this that has the European spec A3B3, A3B4, that is also a high calcium, high detergent formulation. So again, not the best choice for a direct injection engine. Like you mentioned, the SN Plus is out, it addresses it. This oil here, for example, happens to have the Dexos Gen 2. This is the new spec from General Motors, it's updated. It's the first oil spec designed to deliver protection against low speed pre-ignition. The downside of the Dexo spec, it's only available in 0W20 and 5W30 viscosity grades. So there are some limitations on the market out there right now. Okay, so if I didn't want an API oil, but I wanted a, a, a custom, not a custom blend, but a performance blend of oil, mm -hmm. um, I take it that's where you kind of enter the picture. Well, we've been very fortunate. We've been working with Oak Ridge National Laboratory for about three years now working on a research project investigating the causes of low speed pre-ignition and you know the chiming chain wear issues and all of this. Out of that work, we've actually come out with our own product line that fully addresses all of these issues. So while the industry is working to address it with SN Plus, the Dexos Gen 2, Driven has addressed it with our DI line of oils that provides the correct chemistry, the right balance of additives for the application to protect high performance direct injection engines. So the Dexos Gen 2 spec from GM, that addresses the, um, the issue with the low speed pre-ignition on direct injection engines, and that's available, but available only in a 0W20 and a 5W30? Yeah, Dexos Gen 2 is an oil spec, and there's several brands that offer it, but it is in limited viscosity grades. Mm -hmm. That's one reason why we came out with the DI line of products. So it brings in, you know, direct injection specific chemistry to resolve timing chain wear, to deal with LSPI and the other issues like, you know, intake valve buildup, try to limit that. But it does it in 020, 530, 040, mm. 1550, 10W60, so that the performance enthusiast that's doing custom engine builds or modifications, you have a full range of viscosities to address your specific need. 
So are there any other things, I mean, this is the easy pour-in solution, but if you have a direct injection engine and you wanna make sure you've got your best chance of avoiding the low-speed pre-ignition issue, what else can be done? Well, good quality fuel goes a big way. You know, having the injector clean is gonna make sure that it atomizes the fuel better, mm. which gives it the best chance for vaporization. Gotcha. So cleaning the, the injectors, you know, so high quality fuel, top tier gasoline's a big one, uh, using some kind of fuel additive, you know, uh, Chevron Tecron is one. We have a product called uh, Injector Defender. This the same type of PEA chemistry that can clean the mm -hmm. GDI deposits and injectors. And it's really important to use the correct kind of additive that's designed for GDI engines, mm -hmm. not just any other brand. You know, injector cleaner is gonna do the work for a GDI setup. Uh -huh. So using good quality fuel, keeping the injectors clean, also changing the oil frequently. Yeah, and how frequently? That's like one of the most uh, common questions we get asked. You know, is it okay to go 3,000 miles? Do I go 6,000 miles? Can I go 12,000 miles? We get all kinds of, of questions on that. and you know, that answer seems to continually change. Well, it's because everyone drives different. And you're in different areas with different fuels, different temperatures, you know, to really know what's the right oil change interval for, you, for somebody, you have to do used oil analysis and let that data drive that decision. But in most cases, especially with the uh, direct injection engine, because of the soot, because of the fuel dilution, you know, let's say in a port injected engine, maybe you were going five, 6,000 miles before you changed the oil. In a performance DI engine, you're probably gonna wanna go closer to three to 4,000 miles. It's gonna take a shorter drain interval to make sure you're keeping the oil clean and cool and dry so you don't want the fuel, you don't want it getting dirty. Now, one of the things that's really popular in our market, and I don't know how it is where you guys are, but E85, a lot of flex fuel guys mm -hmm. are doing performance upgrades and, and using that, and it seems to be the poor man's race gas. I mean, right It's fantastic, yeah. It's great stuff. But how does it affect uh, the engine oil? With E85, you have to run a richer air fuel mixture. Mm which that means you're putting more fuel into the oil. Ah, gotcha. So most oil change interval systems, they're you know, onboard systems, they're actually measuring what's called the oil to fuel ratio. Mm -hmm. And that's really what determines how long an oil will last. So when you go from a you know, pump fuel to E85, you essentially cut your oil life in half because you're gonna double the amount of fuel essentially that you're running through the engine. Gotcha, gotcha. And it's, besides that dilution effect, are there any other issues you're going to have with E85? Well, the dilution effect is one that, you know, not only is it shortening the oil life, it's also recommended to go up one viscosity grade. So okay. let's say the engine normally calls for 5W30 with gasoline, you go to E85, you might want to consider going like a 5W40 or something mm -hmm. like that instead to help offset the amount of wear that could be occurring because of the diluting of the fuel and oil mixture getting a lower viscosity. Mm. So that's part of what we could try to do. The other thing is in shorter drain intervals, th the next thing to really worry about is corrosion and the mm. moisture buildup. You know, because ethanol based fuels absorb atmospheric moisture, mm. they tend to kind of sometimes pull and separate. So especially like a lower, not so much E85, but maybe like an E15 or an E20 mm -hmm. or some kind of oxygenated fuel like that, if it's new and fresh and dry, it's going to be really good. Mm. But if it ages and gets in moisture, it's going to separate that out. Now your octane value decreases. Mm. So for your DI engine, now you got that double whammy. If you got that high detergent motor oil, of course that can cause LSPI. Mm -hmm. But if you have a oxygenated fuel that's full of moisture, mm. it tends to drag the ethanol out of suspension in there. So now you have a lower octane value fuel Ooh, that's a bad combination. It is a bad combination. You know, the other thing about it, you know, if, if people can't catch on to that octane deal, the other thing that I kind of thought about in, in doing all this and, and touching and feeling a lot of this, the fuel, when it mixes with the oil, almost feels like diesel. And I mean, and that's what's happening. We have mm -hmm. a diesel event occurring. Exactly. Um, so now we have an understanding of what low speed pre-ignition is, which engines are affected, why it happens, and how to prevent it. Now, what else can we know? Well, we're going to give you a deeper dive in a tech article because there's right. so much here that you really can't cover in a video. In a video, your attention span is only so long. So if you'd like to know more, make sure you follow the links below here or click on www.dsportmag.com to find out or pick up a copy of Dsport Magazine on the newsstand. And Lake, while I have you here, do you mind some bonus footage? Yeah, let's go for it. All right. So 
We're gonna get a little bit off topic, so that'll be the next video. Just click on it and follow us here.